What's going on, everybody? My name is Shelby Hutchins. I'm the president of the SFA Bass Club. Um, I've been to three tournaments since my last video. Wanted to kind of go over the things that I did and the stages that the fish were in. Um, had three relatively similar scenarios. Um, my first tournament was at Conroe. It was a bed fishing deal. It was a couple weeks ago, right before all the rain. A um, lot of lot of bed fish. A lot of a lot of fish moving up to spawn. I took a real simple approach. I take a really simple approach anytime the fish are getting close to beds. Green pumpkin Cinco, either weightless, uh, light Texas rig. Um, the difference there is what kind of bottom texture you're dealing with. If it's a hard bottom, if it's a soft bottom. If it's if it's a softer bottom, you got a little bit of that silty muck on the bottom, or if you've got some light vegetation, or even in the case of Rayburn and Toledo, you got some pretty thick aquatic vegetation growing up, you're gonna to want to throw a wacky style or uh, just a weightless Texas rig, or even a light Texas rig if you're fishing the deeper grass edges. Um, so that's that's how that went. Uh, I didn't even win that tournament, I came in second. I had like 14 something. Um, but I caught fish doing something that I knew I could get bites doing and I knew I could get some decent size. Uh, as the day progressed, those four to five pound fish started moving up into the area that I was fishing and had I had a couple more hours, it would have been interesting to see or if the tournament had been a day later, it would have been interesting to see what kind of weight we could have pulled out of there. But that was the weight we had. We were ahead of the fish. That's always key this time of year. If you're bed fishing in an area that you know that they're moving to, you always want to be ahead of them. Um, it does you no good to sit where they were three weeks ago in their wintering spots if they're already 100 yards up the creek getting ready to spawn. So that was Conroe. Um, Cinco, I did some bed fishing. I'll go over my bed fishing setup here in a little bit. Uh, the next the next place we went to getting ready for the FLW National Championship, we spent a couple of days messing around on Hartwell. Hartwell was a lot of fun. We caught some big fish on Hartwell. Um, I, I think the pattern that we found a couple of days before the FLW Tour was there would not have held up because they had continuous warm weather and those fish were going to the banks and they were going to spawn. Uh, as you see with the article that FLW did about what the winners threw and things like that, they threw the Cinco that I was talking about that I fished on Conroe. Uh, but what we found out there was an awesome, awesome textbook crankbait bite. And what I mean by that is these spotted bass and these largemouth, and there's big populations of both on Hartwell. Uh, there's this misconception that there's more spots and that the spots get bigger than the largemouth on Hartwell. And based on what I've seen, that's not necessarily true. I think there's I think there's just as many. I just think the spots are so much more aggressive that they're going to be the ones that you catch first. Um, so what we found on Hartwell, we went way up the river. We went up the Seneca Arm of Hartwell, and we started fishing. We got to the back of this one creek, and these are shallow creeks that we're fishing. These are maybe 150-yard creeks, and you can point them out on a map. They're easy to point out. But we started fishing these creeks, and at the backs, we'd get largemouth. Those big girls are getting ready to spawn. We caught those on a jerk bait. Uh, I throw a Mega Bass Ido 110. I've thrown every jerk bait and it's worth the money. I know people are scared about spending that kind of money on bait, but that bait is worth it. Uh, 10 pound fluorocarbon, seven foot, medium to medium heavy. I like a little bit faster tip, that way I can get that bait to pop and dart. Um, but I want a soft middle, so whenever that fish takes it, I can just absorb her and reel into her and get her with those sticky hooks that are on that mega bass. Um, so that was fun. But one thing we noticed is when we got to the back of the drains, we were catching those largemouth. But as we came out, we start catching some spots. And finally, we figured out that, and it took us literally all day the first day to finally tie that dude on. But this is just a Rapala DT-10. And on all those clay points at the mouths of these 150-yard short creeks, if you had clay and you had a little bit of rock on top of that clay, you could catch a pile of fish real, real quick. 
Um, this is just a DT10 and Caribbean shad. I don't know what that lighting's like, but it's just a faded chartreuse on blue. We also threw blueback herring. I hated throwing this color because it's so, so stereotypical and Hartwell is known as being a herring lake. And then whenever we got off the sides of these points, I'd throw a DT14 out there. Um, you can probably throw your strike kings, all those other crankbaits. But the point is, is those, those fish were on such typical, such stereotypical stuff that it was easy to pattern them. It was easy to go from point to point to point and just run that and catch fish. Uh, I think that's one thing that maybe not a lot of people recognize or realize, but if you're catching fish like that, and especially spotted bass, spotted bass are habitual animals just like humans. If they're in a spot, they're in there for a reason. And 90% of the time, that reason is to eat. Um, so they gang up real hard, and they get in there real, real hard. Largemouth are a little bit different on those real, real clear lakes. They're a little bit trickier, a little bit smarter. Uh, but if you can get in an area where there's a good concentration of big ones, uh, you can get into them pretty good. But it's 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 definitely harder to find those bigger concentrations of big largemouth on those herring lakes than it is big concentrations of decent sized spots. We weren't catching any real giants. We caught a couple of three and a halves, um, but they definitely they definitely put some weight in your sack on tournament day. So that was that was Hartwell. Uh, when I'm throwing a crankbait, I throw a seven foot a seven between a seven foot and a seven eleven rod. It just depends on what bait I'm throwing, how deep I want to get it down to. Uh, seven foot. Uh, medium to medium heavy just like that jerk bait almost the exact same setup as that jerk bait uh, and I'll use that for a DT6 and a DT10 um, I've always got a DT6 tied on doesn't matter what lake I'm going to it's just a confidence bait for me if I want to get it a little bit deeper I'll go to a 7.2 and 7.2 is really the ideal length I use a castaway a big T shallow cranker it's a it's a great great rod, great for square bills, but it also throws these things really really well. It's a it's a it's a blend. It's a fiberglass and composite blend. It's a fiberglass and composite blend, so uh, we like it. It allows you to feel the fish, but you won't rip the hooks out whenever you set into them. And a lot of times, I don't even set the hook on crankbait fish. You just start reeling and just slow slow pull. Um, and they'll hook themselves. A lot of guys like to switch out the trebles on these Rapalas. I don't really mess around with it too much because they normally come with VMCs and VMCs are pretty solid. On all my traps and things like that though, I will switch to a Gamagatsu EWG treble. I, I'm just a Gamagatsu guy. I think they make the best hooks and their hooks don't seem to rust as easily as Mustads or other people's hooks. So that was, that was Hartwell. Um, then Kiwi, we didn't do so hot at Kiwi, caught a lot of small fish, uh, it was really frustrating fishing that long without a three pound bite, which if we had a three pound bite each day, we would have been in the top 10. That was a, that was the entire difference between where we were in the top 10. So it's frustrating, but we got on a couple different patterns. Uh, again, it's frustrating when you fish two days straight and don't see a fish over three and a half pounds. Uh, but that's that's how that lake was, unfortunately. And kudos to everybody that was in the top 10. That was an awesome job figuring out those fish, covering enough water and picking the right places to look and practice where those bigger spawning fish were. Uh, we found several bed fish. We caught several bed fish on the first and second day of the tournament. But those bed fish are so finicky, they will get up there and do their business and back out in less than a day. And that, to me, that's amazing because in Texas here, we don't see it that much. I've seen, I've seen the same fish here on Texas in a bed for week, a week and a half or two weeks at a time, just hanging out. Um, so it was weird to see how fast they move. And I don't know if that's due to the clear water down there. I don't know if that was due to a lunar cycle that's going on. I know we finally got a full moon right now, and this weekend is probably going to be the best weekend for fishing that Texas is going to have all year. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what caused those fish to move up and move out so fast. 
I've never seen fish move that fast in and out of spawning. I've heard of it. Uh, it was just unfortunate to run into it in that circumstance. But we did find a good swim bait bite. We caught some bed fish. And again, the Cinco played a factor. And I'm sure there were a bunch of guys throwing a Cinco, and I'm sure there were a bunch of guys throwing that swim bait. But the swim bait bite was fun because we were fishing the same stuff that we were fishing at Hartwell, except for the water was a lot clearer at Kiwi. So what we had to do, cut off the DT-10, cut off all that stuff. And on these clay points, there'd be laydowns every once in a while. And I've heard of this pattern done at Skeet Reese State at Gunnersville when he won Gunnersville last year, the year before that. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of fun. You just, you throw these swim baits by these laydowns and these pre-spawn and post-spawn fish will sit in those laydowns and wait for something to come by and they'll just ambush it. And it's a totally visual strike. You can see them eat it, um, which it's crucial to throw A, monofilament, B, a rod with a soft tip. I was using, the rod that I was using is a 7.3 medium. I have 15 pound trilene big game. I'm not that picky on my monofilament. Uh, big game's good enough for me. Uh, I don't see any reason spending the kind of money on mono that you spend on your fluorocarbon. Um, but we had a lot of fun. We caught a bunch of fish on it. A bunch of those big spots were sitting down in those trees and it was fun to kind of watch them come up and shark it. Um, but one thing is you couldn't jerk the bait away from the fish. You almost had to not look at your bait when you're reeling it in um, in order to hook those fish because they would, they, you, you would be reeling your swim bait and you kind of keep it high in the water column. You'd be reeling your swim bait and all of a sudden you see this dark, dark shadow come out and chase it and you get excited and you'd be waiting for them and then you'd hit it. And then as soon as he hit it, you'd yank it away from him and he'd go back into that bush. Um, so it was frustrating. It took a while to get used to that, but my setup for it finally got right. I was throwing it the first day on, I think, a seven-foot medium heavy, and I was just yanking the bait away from the fish. It was not not pretty. Um, but I got it straightened out for the second day, so I want to share that setup with y'all. Like I said, it's a 7.3 medium action. Um, kind of got a lighter tip to it. 15-pound trialing, big game, mono. Um, but perhaps the most crucial element to this, I was throwing a 3 aught. Three lock belly weighted hook, and I put a big old stinger treble on there. And that was just to ensure that if they swiped at it, I was going to hook them. Now, the swim bait I was using, Double Z Swayback Swimmer. This color is called Voodoo Shad. It's got a lot of blue in it. That clear water, I really, really like a, I really, really like a swim bait with a lot of blue in it. Uh, I feel like the fish, I feel like it's just more natural. Um, but like I said, you got that stinger treble on there and all that is, is a trailer hook keeper from a, uh, spinnerbait trailer hook. Keep it simple. So you screw that swim bait on there. And you can see how much of that swim bait is sticking out and that's, that's a five inch swim bait. So, you can see how much of that swim bait's sticking past that hook and then kind of realize the necessity for the stinger treble on it. You can either, I always bury the hook. I'm just, that's, that's tech exposing it. I'm old school, I always tech expose my hooks just like that. And then you can do a couple different things on this treble. You can either bury this treble in this bait which actually makes it keel a little bit better. It won't roll over so much on you. Um, or you can just leave it free hanging. Um, the only problem with leaving it free like that is you're a little bit more likely to get hung up if you do throw it in a tight spot. If, if I embed that thing in that swim bait, I know exactly where that treble is so I can skip it into tight spots, throw it in tight spots like that, and I won't, I won't get in trouble doing that. And there were a few times where you'd have to cast in between a fork and a limb or something like that, and doing that kind of helped out. Um, but you just slow roll that thing. Keep it kind of high in the water column because spots are very visual feeders. They're feeding up. Uh, keep it high in the water column. They'd come out of those laydowns and just ambush it. It was a lot of fun. 
Um, next thing I want to go over is my bed fishing setup. I don't play games when it comes to bed fishing. Uh, this is actually my lighter setup. This is a 7.2 frog rod. That's a 65 pound uh, Power Pro Super Slip. And it's, a, it's on a 7 to 1 reel. It's my frog rod whenever I'm not fishing for bed and fish. Um, but all, this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite baits for bed fishing. All it is is a swim bait jig head. And I'm here, I'll even, I'll even undress it for you. We'll get her down to the bare essentials here. But I've been playing with this for a couple years now. That's a quarter ounce, quarter ounce swim bait head. I'll go up to a three quarter. It really doesn't matter the size. But the point is, is it's got that beefy, beefy hook in it. I do not want that fish, whenever I hit her, to bend that hook out. That is the worst thing that can happen. And I've had it happen a couple times whenever I was first experimenting with this. And I really decided, I decided I needed a heavier hook. So I'll take this. Go pick you up a spinnerbait skirt. Take an old ratty spinnerbait skirt off a spinnerbait. You don't throw that much. Just make sure it's bright colored. It can be pink. It can be purple. It does not matter. This is just a white and chartreuse one that I found laying on the bottom of the boat, I'll be perfectly honest. Thread that sucker on there, just like you would a swim jig or spinnerbait or whatever else. Okay, so she's on there. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll trim that skirt to meet the bottom of that hook, because I don't want it, I don't want it hanging out. I don't want anything past that hook except for the trailer that I use, reaching out that that fish can grab and pick it off and move it off the bed without me getting a hook in that fish. So you got a heavy wire swim bait head, you got a bright colored skirt. Now the third factor is whatever trailer you decide to use. This is just a zoom, white zoom speed crawl. Everybody's been throwing these on beds for years and years and years. Um, Net bait pack of crawling white's great. It's got a little bit more action than this, just because you can flicker the tentacles when it's sitting on the bed. Um, I know guys will use a million different things for them, but this is one of my go-tos. So I'll thread that, and I I took off about a quarter inch off that bait. I don't know if you can see it. But I took off about a quarter inch off that bait, um, just because, like I said, I don't want... I don't want that fish to be able to pick up this bait and move it off the bed and that hook not be in its mouth. Um, so that, that is a, that is what I use for bed fishing. It's small, it's compact, but it's, it's a big wide profile. And that's what you want. You want something that gets their attention and if they're really, really responsive, I'll throw a heavier weight. A heavier weight you can snap against the bottom what this jig's going to do on the bottom is it's going to sit up like that you're going to shake your rod tip real lightly it's going to shake back and forth and you snap that rod tip all it's going to do for you saltwater guys out there it's going to do just like you're snapping jig heads for redfish it's just going to go it's just going to go like that and it's going to go real real fast it's going to do that over and over again until you hop all the way across the bed the idea is is with this heavy line and everything that fish can see this line. That fish can obviously see this and tell that that's not natural. But all I'm trying to do is piss that fish off. The matter that fish gets, the higher chances are that she's going to eat this thing and she's going to go in the box. So that's that's one of my favorite ways. I'll also use just a Texas rig. Um, your big bite warm mouth is great on beds. Um, Weightless Cinco, things like that. I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff that's pretty textbook stuff. You can also go real, real natural with it. Full-size biffle bug on a heavy-duty shaky head works great on beds if they're not responsive to the loud stuff like this. But chances are it'll take me less time to make a fish mad and make her eat this um, than it will me just slowly dragging something real, real natural across the bed. I can do this faster. I can make more presentations to that fish. 
And I can probably make her a whole lot more mad with this than I can uh, something more natural. I know there's a million different takes on bed fishing, but that's mine. It's fun. They get really, really mad at it. And it's by far one of my favorite ways to catch a fish. Um, so that was, that's my recap on Kiwi, Hartwell, and Conroe. I've got another tournament coming up on Toledo Bend here in a couple weeks. Um, hopefully I can get on some big crankbait fish or some of those fish that are just getting out to those offshore spots. They should be, they should be ripe. Um, otherwise I'll probably look for some frog fish. There should be a few spawners left, although with this full moon, this last wave is kind of going to get itself taken care of and they're going to start looking to their summer, summer haunts, but there will be, there will be some fry garters up. So there will be a frog bite. Um, there should be some fish and some brush paws that are kind of recuperating after the spawn, trying to rest up. Um, so hopefully we'll get into some fish and I will let y'all know how that goes. Um, y'all send me a message or something if there's some other stuff you want to see. If you have any questions about my setups, if you have any questions about any other situations that you'd like to see videos on, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to do it. Um, Hope y'all are having a good week.